Welcome back to another designer profile video and this one we're looking at the work of T Petro. Um, Thomas has gotten better and better with his course design as he's gone on and is one of rightly the game's top designers. Now what we're going to particularly look at with this course is plot design. His plot designs are phenomenal whether it be this, the Highlander, Carbondale, Potunk, he always nails exactly what he's going for there. But then the other thing that we're going to particularly look at is partly green contouring which really helps with this but just unique hold sites now as with so many of the other courses on these videos i found it really tough to work out which holes we were going to feature particularly with the par fours as as a set they're greater than the sum of their parts there's so many different hole ideas green types sites everything and the way he uses the coastline on this course is also really interesting so we're going to leap in and play a few of these holes but you'll see immediately from what we're looking at the plot is spectacular and really just makes the course the holes look like they've been laid down on land that was already there and that's in huge part down to his ability in creating an, an environment before he starts off it's also got some really good and interesting coastline holes some of which will feature um but the inland holes are very much a star of the show as well so we can leap right in do enjoy and so right from the very get-go we can see the ocean in the background we know exactly where we are we've got a big wide fairway but as you'd expect that fairway is not all usable fairway and where you want to be is that area short right of those bunkers which will lead you an unimpeded view to the green and ways to bounce the ball on short we look at the green contouring itself and it sweeps in left to right with a big spine there's all sorts of little features on here and that's a taste of really what's to come it's a really strong opening hole it's kind of a gentle handshake but really ramps up at the green the par five i've chosen to feature is the third because it's interesting in how it uses the coastline you can see the flag from a distance but actually your ideal line is as far close to the coastline as you can away to the left before the whole dog legs away and that's really difficult to do with sculpting the way he's managed it is giving you all sorts of fairway right because if you bail out there you push all your pressure onto the approach shot because as you'd expect the land moves from right to left the further left you are the more you can use that to help you the further right you are you've got that little mound in front which means you can't land it on short and then the green runs away you can probably still birdie from the back of the green but it's it's tricky and again we're going to cheat on the par fours now we're going to pick two for me the fifth is a great example of a mid to long to short par four that kind of plays differently based on how much challenge you take on off the tee further you bail out left where all the space is the longer an approach you've got but you can take driver even over those two little bunkers there if the winds and conditions are right and because you're hitting diagonally across the fairway you've got to be really confident with club selection the green's wild there's loads going on interesting tiers and contours and for me it just makes it a really interesting hole that's going to play differently each time which is kind of what you really want now the path four it shares with is the 16th which it's kind of an ode to, I think, Cabot Cliffs' 17th. It's really interesting in how the land movement works, and you've got one big feature that this hole is all built off, which is the fact that the green is kind of at the bottom of a hill. So if you're driving this, where do you land the ball? How do you manage that really big, wild slope? Do you want to go down it and then leave an awkward putt back up and over it, or a pitch, or do you want to lay up short of it? If so, how are you landing it short? It just poses all sorts of questions that are really interesting and there's no one right way to play the hole which is a great method for a short par four now for best par three we can go with the 17th and this is mostly due to setting it is exactly where you'd want to put a stellar par three and the whole design really lives up to it as well there's interesting bunker placement which are more for visuals than actually catching shots but the green makes it challenging and that short bunker left is asking you the question of whether you try to fly it all the way to this position or use that little slope just to the right to funnel it down but if you leave it up top then you're going to face a trickier putt down for a birdie it's a really interesting hole but more than anything it's an all-world green side and so we finish with 18 and you're hitting again you've got the drama of hitting again over this little ravine small bridge to get you across weird tree that i've never really understood in the middle but hey you, you allow people a few things big wide fairway because all the pressure is really piled on the approach shot it plays very uphill towards that clubhouse and because the green's kind of disconnected you've got a small little ribbon of fairway 
you want to think about if you are laying up where. Well, your preferred sides are right, but that's pinched both short and long. And the pin positions on this green, it's a small green, it's really heavily contoured. They're tough to get close to, so you're probably not going for it in two, which really adds to that question of where you lay up your third. It's an interesting hole to close off, and it's a really stellar way to finish your round. So what can we take from this for our own designs? Well, I think, firstly, play around on it, play a couple of rounds on it, and notice the holes that maybe I left out. There's so much good with these par fours as a set, and there's so many interesting little features. It's not one of those courses where every hole is like, oh, bang, it's that one because it had that big visual feature. It's far more the subtlety of how you play the hole, how wind direction will change it, what sort of options you have. Take six, for example. Could look as simple as you just blast a driver up here, but actually if you do that, you've got a shallow green, do you want to pitch into it? And well, then we're thinking, well, maybe it's three wood, but then there's cambered fairway, so that's bringing you more back to the middle. You probably want to be over this side. That's guarded with these bunkers and it runs out a little bit. So that's quite precise. Well, if we go down here and hit three wood, well, we're probably ending up in this little rocky patch. So we don't really want to be there. Well, but maybe we could hit driver up here. Is that an option? It seems to be. But again, we're leaving a pitch towards this and that's going to run off. Maybe I don't want that. And there's all of these things for a hole that looks wide open. But there's so much to it when you dig into it. Secondly, things I really enjoyed were like the way the elevation was managed. Something like the first hole, it's 50 feet downhill, but it's all so gradual. And it's just gently working its way towards the water. So you're often, here we're taking on, for example, sometimes it will be, he wants you to take on the elevation change from the tee shot because that's making you judge how far your driver's going. Can you carry this bunker? Or can you run into these bunkers? Or do you want to lay up short for your, your ideal angle as we discussed? Sometimes though, we look at, I think it's nine, most of the angles on the approach shot for a similar, but a slightly different test because you're never playing the approach from exactly the same spot. So it's always going to vary a little bit more. He also does, I think the climbing holes like 12 really, really well. It's hard to make holes that are 50 feet uphill play really well. And yet 12 is a great example of a green side that makes this hole really work. And it's also benched into this lovely little bowl which is then featured in how the green itself works to give a bit more forgiveness. There's loads to admire here simply. Um, the little green contouring can, I think, get a little bit severe in spots and it can kind of micro tear the greens a touch. And that's exactly what he was going for. Now, with your designs, you may want to flatten out some of these slopes because it can, if you're not careful, these do it really, really well. And they're mostly on shorter holes or par fives. But let's say every single hole you're just missing and you're like, what, eight yards away from the pin and you're down a red slope. That can get really frustrating to demand this level of accuracy on every single hole. So that's one thing I would be wary of with your own designs. It's really well done here. Just make sure that you're not overdoing it because too many features on too small a green can get very punitive very quickly. So that's really it. Oh, and the clubhouse is also phenomenal. Give, give that a little look. And that really is it with Muirfield. It's an Muir... And that's really it with Muirhead. It's an awesome course. It plays really, really well. It's one of the best of his profile. And it has this really cool setting that I don't think we've really seen in other courses. So enjoy it. Play it multiple times. Take as much as you can from it. And have a lot of fun.